In today's episode, we are celebrating the boy who lived. We are celebrating Harry Potter's birthday with literally one of the most magical products I have ever used. And I do mean ever used. Just a forewarning, you're gonna be obsessed. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your cricket and crafting channel where I post cricket tutorials and projects and inspiration every single week. So if you're trying to learn or even master your cricket cutting machine, well, first off, you're in the right place. So you are definitely going to want to go ahead and stamp that subscribe button and then ring that bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss a single Cricut Minute. Plus, it's free. <laughs> now today, you guys, we are cranking up the volume on the magic because today is Harry Potter's birthday. And not only that, but we're also sprinkling some magical themed or Harry Potter themed project all throughout next week as well. So that's another reason you are definitely going to want to be subscribed and have that bell on for all the notifications because who wants to miss a Harry Potter themed cricket project? Not me. <laughs> and I am so, so excited for all of these projects because in every single one of these projects, I am using materials or tools that I personally just find magical. Now I've thought long and hard how I want to kick off this little mini series and I honestly could not think of anything better than using StarCraft Electrofoil. Because I mean, if we're being real here, there is no material more magical than the StarCraft Electrofoil. I am obsessed with this stuff and as soon as you see it, you're going to be equally as obsessed. It's so much fun. But before we get into all that, the few things that we're going to need to make this project happen is obviously a cutting machine. Now I am using my Cricut Maker, but you can also use a Cricut Joy or a Cricut Explore Air 2 as well. I'm also using my Easy Press 2, but you could also use a household iron or even like an actual heat press. However, I will always try to recommend you go towards like an actual Easy Press 2 or an actual heat press, just because in my own personal opinion, household irons are not nearly as reliable. You're also gonna need a weeding tool, and I personally have never found anything better than this pin pin weeding tool right here. This little guy is insanely, and I do mean insanely good. There's this little pin or needle that comes out to the end of the weeding tool, and this makes it a game changer. And I do mean a game changer when it comes to weeding out your designs, especially if you have a lot of small, intricate details. It did take me like a day or two to get the hang of it, but once I got the feel for it, honestly, there's there was no going back. <laughs> Plus, I just love that there's a lifetime warranty on this thing, and it's also just super affordable. You are also gonna need some Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive. Now, this adhesive right here, as you can see on this camera, it's actually like a see-through type of material. So what we're actually gonna be doing is actually cutting this out on our Cricut. We're gonna weed it out like we normally would with any other type of heat transfer vinyl. And we're actually gonna apply our StarCraft Electrofoil to this, however, there are some major caveats that you need to be aware of to make sure that this is a complete and total success. So be sure that you stay tuned until the end of today's episode because I'm gonna fill you in on all my little tips, tricks, and hacks. You are also gonna need some material to apply your design to. Now I'm using this pillow or pillow cover rather from Ikea. I actually got this on clearance for just a couple bucks. Now, if this looks familiar to you, that's because it probably should. <laughs> I am actually reusing the same pillow cover that I made a few weeks back or so with this faux leather from 651 vinyl, which will soon be 143vinyl.com. So I actually used also in that video, the Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive to apply faux leather to this pillow. So in case you're wanting to check that out as well, I will link that for you right up here as well as down in that description box below. Um, but for today's video, I will be using the opposite side because I definitely do not want to remove this. Not that I could if, even if I wanted to. <laughs> and last but 
most definitely, definitely not least, here is the star of the show. So here are some of the roles that I have of the StarCraft Electrofoil. You guys, every single time I enroll one of these roles, especially the rainbow holographic roles, literally, <laughs> It like almost takes my breath away. They are so, so gorgeous. I promise you, promise you that what you see on video is nothing in comparison to what they look like in real life. There's just no way that you can capture the beauty of this stuff on camera. So just please take that into account. But I still think you'll get like a glimpse of how gorgeous it really is. Now there are so many different roles to choose from. All of the roles are 25 feet long. 25 feet long, which is just insanely good in my own opinion. But here are just a few that I have currently on me. Um, I do plan on getting a much, much more in the very near future. So this is Blue Holographic Rainbow. Like literally you guys, every single time I enroll this, it's just, it's so freaking gorgeous. I mean, it looks pretty just on the roll, but once you start to unroll it, it's, it's a game changer, like everything changes. It's so pretty. Next is this pink holographic rainbow right here. Like you guys, like, isn't that gorgeous? Like, I know that that's not just me. So please let me know your thoughts about this down in that comment section below, because I am honestly, I'm dying to know. <laughs> Here is another color that is not holographic rainbow. It is just rose gold, but it is still absolutely stunning. And you'll see why here in just a second. I just love this. Like it looks wet, it looks liquidy, it looks like just stunning. It looks rich, it looks high class. It's just gorgeous all the way around. Like I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> But finally, here is the role that we are using for today's project. This is purple holographic rainbow. And you guys like this, this color right here, this just does things to me. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this so much. Like it is beyond, like beyond stunning. Like I hope y'all can see just how stunning that really is. It's so, so gorgeous. Now this could be just my twisted brain. <laughs> but whenever I see this, one of the things that always, always, always pops out in my mind is how awesome this would look as a Patronus from Harry Potter. Now, if you've never seen Harry Potter, then you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. And I probably sound like a mad madman right now and that's okay. <laughs> but all you need to know is that it's supposed to look just very um, ghostly, very magical, very, um, almost like otherworldly, if that makes sense. So this is what we are using for this project today. I am so, so excited. And we are actually gonna be using an SVG from Auntie Tay's SVG membership, her craft day creator membership. So I'm gonna get that pulled up right now and we'll get started. All right, so here I am on auntietay.com and I'm gonna come right over here to where it says SVGs and cut files. I'm gonna select that. And I'm just gonna scroll down here just a little bit and I'm gonna select SVGs. And I'm just gonna scroll down here just a little bit further. And this time I wanna select Disney and characters. And then I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit further yet again. And this time I'm gonna select Harry Potter. Now, if I'm just being completely honest with you all, I was completely, completely torn between using this all this time, always Severus Snape, Patronus type of SVG image and this one right here that says, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good, um, but I am gonna to opt towards this Patronus one right here. So I'm just gonna select that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is head over here to Cricut Design Space and we'll get started with our project. So first things first, I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the screen and click on Upload, and then Upload Image, and then Browse. And here is our image right here. So I'm just gonna select that and then come right over here and select open. Now right here for the image name, I am going to take out this number and I am gonna go ahead and change the name of this just a little bit, just so it'd be a little bit easier for me to find it in the future. So I'm gonna put it in here, Patronus, Deer, and then hyphen all this time. And then for tags, I'm gonna put it in here, Harry Potter, Snape, Patronus, always. 
There we go. So now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select save. And as you can see, it is right here in our recently uploaded images. So I'm gonna select that and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select insert images. Now, if you'll remember, I am applying this image to this pillowcase right here. And this pillowcase is 20 inches by 20 inches. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left hand side of the page and I'm gonna select shapes, this option right here and I'm gonna open up a square. So now what I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top left-hand corner of the page. I'm gonna click on this little charcoal gray color swatch right here, and I'm gonna change that to this dark green color. And the reason why I'm doing that, although it's not important in the least for you to do that at home, the reason I like to do this is because I feel like it makes it just a little bit less confusing for those who are beginners. And anything that I can do to make all this less confusing, I am all about doing that. So what this is gonna do is actually serve as a template for our pillow cover that I just showed you from Ikea. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size, and I'm gonna change that width to 20 for 20 inches hit enter, and since that padlock is locked, I went ahead and changed that height to be the same proportions. So right now, obviously, it's extremely large and we can't see all of it. So a way to fix that is to come down here towards the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm gonna just zoom out by clicking this little uh, minus sign or subtraction sign, just like that. All right, so now here is our square, or our template, rather, and what I'm gonna do is right-click it and then just come down here and select send to back. We can now just drag our image right over top of our, our, our template. <laughs> and we can actually grab this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner of our image. And then just drag that outwards until it's about the right size we want it to be on our actual pillow cover. Now here's something that's extremely important to know about resizing your image like this. You do not want any part of your image, neither the width or the height, to be larger than 11 and a half inches. And because 11 and a half inches is the max cutting size for the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Explore Air 2. Now, if you're working with the Cricut Joy instead, your max width is going to be four and a half inches. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is actually just keep dragging this out. And obviously our height has a larger measurement than our width. So the height is what we're gonna to to keep our eye on. All right, so right about there should work. So it's just a little bit less than 11 and a half inches. So that's gonna look pretty good on our pillow cover as far as size goes anyway. So we don't need that pillow cover anymore. So I'm gonna click on that and then come up here towards the top left-hand corner of that pillow cover or that template, <laughs> and then I'm gonna select this red X right here. And just like that, we are good to go. So now I'm gonna come up here towards the top right-hand corner. I'm gonna select Make It. Now since we are doing this as a heat transfer vinyl type of application, what we actually have to do now is mirror our image. And we do that by coming over here to the left-hand side of the page and clicking on Mirror. And now all we need to do is come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select Continue. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Cricut Maker, get that all started up. And while that's warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and get my cutting mats prepped and ready. All right, so now we're actually gonna apply our Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive to our cutting mat. Now keep in mind, we are not applying our electrofoil to the cutting mat whatsoever. I know it's a little bit weird, a little bit backwards maybe, uh, just seems a little bit off, but I promise you, stick with me until the end of today's video and it'll all make perfect, perfect sense because this is so, so easy to do. Now, as far as applying our Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive to our cutting mat, there is obviously two different sides. Now, one of these sides, is actually very slick, it's very shiny, kind of glossy looking, very, very smooth. And then the other side is more of a dull matte kind of sheen to it. Definitely not as slick as the opposite side. Now what we want to do is actually apply this down to our cutting mat with the shiny or slick side facing down onto the adhesive, onto the actual cutting mat itself. And again, shiny side or kind of glossy side facing down onto this mat. All 
All right, so we have our Caesar Easy Weight Adhesive applied to our cutting mat. So all we need to do before actually loading this into our cutting machine is actually set the type of material that we're using. And all we're gonna have to do is actually just select everyday iron on this option right here. Now, if you are using a Cricut Explore Air 2 or another Cricut Explore Air model, all you'll need to do is just turn your dial over to custom and then you can select the everyday iron on feature from there. And while that's cutting out, I'm gonna go ahead and get my Easy Press 2 heated up and ready. And it looks like my heat settings were already set to that anyway, so one less step to have to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip my mat over and peel my mat away from the Easy Weed Adhesive instead of the other way around, mainly because I just really believe that helps prevent any kind of damage from occurring to your actual Easy Weed Adhesive, your vinyl, your HTV, whatever you're, you're using. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and I'm just gonna trim off all the excess that we can actually save and use for another project down the road. All right, so whenever it comes time to weed out your design from this, you still wanna make sure that that shiny side or smooth side is facing down towards your surface. And that's because that side is the side with the carrier sheet on it. We wanna weed out the adhesive from the opposite side, which is like the side with a more matte or dull finish to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on a little pin pin, just like so. I'm gonna come in here at an angle and then just kind of come in slightly like at an angle to where I'm kind of grazing the top of it or at least that's what I'm picturing in my mind is I'm just trying to graze the top of it until it kind of catches just enough to where I can actually grab a little piece off of there. And then I'm start pulling back on all of this. All right, so here is our weeded out design, all finished. And you really do wanna make sure that you take your time and get every little piece because I promise you, anything that you leave behind, you will see after we apply that foil. But as for right now, I'm grabbing our pillow cover right here. I'm gonna lay this out. And I'm gonna actually grab our Easy Press mat right here. And I would normally just put it on the other side of the pillow cover but since we already have heat transfer vinyl or at least like the Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive over here on this other side, I wanna make sure I protect that from the heat because I do not want to apply heat and actually break that part down. I wanna leave that just as is. So what I'm doing instead is just inserting this little Easy Press mat inside of this pillow cover. And just doing it that way is gonna help protect the other side. Now, I don't have my larger Easy Press mat up here with me. I actually left that downstairs. But I'm, what I'm doing is just grabbing another smaller Easy Press mat and then just sticking it right in here as well, just to make sure we have all of that covered. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab our Easy Press 2 and then just run over this real, real quick. We wanna get out all the wrinkles, but much, much, much more importantly, we wanna get out any moisture that's inside of this pillow cover. All right, so now I'm just grabbing our Easy Weed Adhesive, and I'm just gonna line this up right over the center of this pillow. All right, so right about there looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is actually grab our cover sheet, AKA Teflon sheet. And I actually forgot to mention this earlier that you would need a Teflon sheet, but um, that is what I do prefer to use. You can also use parchment paper, that'll work just as well. I just really, really like the Teflon sheet just because I feel like it can cover a larger surface area. And plus it's extremely, extremely reusable. You can reuse the same one over and over and over and over. And I found a really, really good deal on Amazon. Um, I will leave that for you linked down in that description box below, as well as literally everything else that I use or mention in this video. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab our Easy Press 2, and I am gonna go ahead and just press this in two parts. I'm gonna come up here for just a few seconds, and then I'll move it right down here for just a few seconds. Because since it is Easy Weed Adhesive, we know that we have that Easy Weed Advantage where we can go ahead and just do a really hot peel. We can do like a two second tack. Technically they call it like a one to two second tack. I usually apply it for around three seconds or so if we wanna get super technical, but I think you get the idea. All right, so for this next round, I think I can actually get by with only one of the Easy Press mats. So I'm gonna remove one of those real quick. 
And what I'm gonna do now is actually grab my electric foil. Again, this is the purple holographic rainbow. This is simply stunning, like so, so gorgeous. I'm literally just gonna roll this out over top of the easy press adhesive or the easy weed adhesive. Sorry about that. You wanna make sure that all of your adhesive is completely covered with the foil. That is extremely, extremely important. Now, real quick, what I'd like to do is actually raise the temperature of my Easy Press 2 to 315 degrees. All right, so now I'm scrubbing my Teflon sheet, AKA my cover sheet yet again, and then just carefully placing that over top of our electric foil, making sure that you don't move or scoot the electric foil off that adhesive whatsoever. All right, so now that our Easy Press 2 is completely heated up, what I'm gonna do is actually just grab this. I'm gonna turn it long ways, just like so. And then I'm gonna apply it right over here, over top of our design. And I'm gonna apply extra, extra pressure for the full 15 seconds. All right, so we can go ahead and remove our cover sheet. I just love this to death. Like, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but there is a clear indention wherever that easy weed adhesive was because that is where it's actually kind of held on to all that electrofoil on top of it. Now, we wanna make sure that this is completely, completely cooled off to the touch. And one of the ways that we can help expedite that process a little bit is by removing this easy press mat that is inside of this pillowcase. You know, like I was saying earlier, this actually holds on to the heat, but also redirects and uh, reflects it back up towards your garment or your fabric, uh, whatever you're applying your design to, right? So by removing this, it's actually gonna allow this to cool down much, much quicker. All right, so it is completely, completely cooled down to the touch. And now what you wanna do is literally grab it and rip it off all in one pull, just like a Band-Aid. It seems very, very counterintuitive. I know, I get it, but that's the way you do this. And the process is so cool. Once you do it once, I promise you will be addicted. <laughs> so much for one pool. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, I am so, <laughs> I am so, so obsessed with this. Like, I love it so, so, so much. Here is the finished project. Now, real quick before you go, I need to show you and tell you about a mistake that I made while I was creating this project. You know, we're all human, we all make mistakes, and that's all right. But I wanna show you my mistake so that you don't have to repeat my mistake. Now, whenever I was applying my StarCraft Electrofoil to my Caesar Easy Weed, I did not apply enough pressure. And the reason that I know that is that if you'll take a look right over here, there is a little bit of a distressed or worn look right here on the doe's ears, maybe around the letters just a hair, um, around some of these shapes as well. And that is honestly a telltale sign that I either didn't apply enough pressure or I ripped off my foil too early. Now, I know for sure I did not rip off my foil too early. I waited probably a good 10 minutes. I let it completely, completely cool off to the touch, so I know that that was not an issue. But I also remember that I didn't apply enough pressure that I'm used to applying when doing this project. And that was totally my fault. It's just a quick oversight that I made that caused this a little bit of a distressed look, which honestly, I don't mind at all. I kind of like it. But if you don't want that kind of look for your project, just make sure that you apply a lot of pressure. Now, this table that I have set up here it, it's pretty high on me. So it honestly would have worked a whole lot better if I had, was downstairs at my countertop that's lower and I could have put more body weight into it. Or, you know, I could have been like kneeling up on a stool or a chair, applying more weight onto this as well. And that probably would have fixed all that together. 
Now, just to make it a whole lot easier for you, what I have done is I have listed and linked literally everything that I have mentioned or used in this video. I have listed and linked all that for you down in that description box below. And I've also went through and found some coupon codes to save you some money because again, I'm all about a bargain. <laughs> So I've listed and linked everything for you down in the description box below. I've also listed and linked all of my favorite Cricut materials, tools, uh, machines, everything. I get asked literally, well, if it's not on a daily basis, it's at least six days out of a week. I get asked what my favorite materials are in terms of Cricut. So I thought it would save everybody a whole lot of time if I just went through and listed and linked everything for you down there as well. Also here lately, I have been going live a whole, whole lot here in our Cricut Crafting Community Facebook group. And it's just been a whole lot of fun. I get to chat with you guys. You get to kind of get a little sneak peek behind the scenes. I get to try out new projects with you all, get your all's input, your all's ideas as well. It's just a really, really good time. Also, if you're trying to learn or master your Cricut cutting machine, then you definitely need to be in that group. It is an amazing group. It is only for positive and uplifting people. Literally, it's all about good vibes only. It's a great uplifting place where you can ask your Cricut related questions and get some answers and show off your finished projects if you'd like and get plenty, a plenty of Cricut related inspiration. All you need to do to join is literally click that link down in that description box below, answer the three simple, simple questions and then request to join. And then we'll go through, we typically get back to you within 24 hours or less and get your request approved. It's so much fun. I promise you, you are going to love it. And hey, while you're at it, if you are feeling social, I would love it if you decided to give me a follow on my Pinterest page, my Facebook page, my actual Facebook business page, my Instagram account, TikTok even, all of those are listed and linked for you down in that description box below. Oh, and hey, for the rest of this little Harry Potter mini series, there's gonna be some videos just popping up out of nowhere, just out of the blue up until next week. So if you are not subscribed and if you have not rung that bell for all of the notifications, then you run the risk of missing some amazing, amazing products or projects with my favorite, most magical products that I love to use. So be sure that you go ahead and stamp that subscribe button and ring that bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss a single cricket minute. I promise you that. Oh, and just one more thing. If you liked today's video or if you learned something new, it would literally, literally mean the absolute world to me. If you went ahead and hit that like button while you're here, as well as let me know what you liked down in the comment section below as well. You guys, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. I am as always so immensely grateful for each and every single one of you all. And I so, so mean that like literally, if you are watching this video, I am so, so grateful for each and every single one of you all. And until next time, stay crafty. Say hello to Dobby, named after the Harry Potter character himself. So Mr. Dobby, I'm gonna tell everybody to tap my face right over here if they want to subscribe, which obviously they do. And how they can tap either of these videos right over here to watch more Cricut tutorials, which obviously they wanna do that too, right? Good job, you're a natural. You're a natural. <laughs>